meeting to order. I'll ask Commissioner Legg if he'll lead us in our invocation, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance. If y'all will, please rise. <coughs> our most lovely, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to meet here again uh, with our residents and our surrounding residents to conduct the business of the town. We ask that you be with everyone here today uh, as we get this presentation and be with each and every elected official that we would think and do things in the way we would want them done for us. We ask you to watch over our first responders, keep them safe, our town staff, our town residents, and all the military personnel around the world. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And again, I welcome you here this evening. We do have an agenda, and, and added to that agenda will be uh, item B, and that would be, of course, public comments. And so uh, do I have a motion to approve our agenda that's before you? So motion to approve with item B included. Okay. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Thank you very much. The purpose of the discussion is uh, in reference to focused annexations and the recommendations from the Town of Hope Mills Plan Review Committee. I'm going to turn it over to uh, our to our planner, Mr. Councilor McLaughlin. Hello, Madam Mayor, board members. Um, as indicated, um, today we're basically going to go through a legislative annexation an an analysis report. Um, before I basically get into the areas, I wanted to do an executive summary on exactly <laughs> what is annexation for the general public. Um, it's defined as the incorporation of a new territory into an existing city or municipality. Um, in this state, there are three methods of annexation that are typically allowed. Um, involuntary, which is city initiated. You have voluntary, which is by petition. Um, by residents of property owners and then you have legislative which is by act of general assembly which is basically the, the route it appears that we're going to be taking if this does move forward in recent years there have been new requirements adopted by the general assembly that outline additional regulations governing involuntary annexations the new requirement for voter approval of involuntary annexation has been widely viewed as a challenge to this facilitation of annexations through this method. As such, viability and growth of municipalities and cities are more likely to occur through the voluntary and legislative processes. In terms of challenging issues, uh, challenges, uh, Town Hope Mills has faced challenges in providing adequate and uniform um, services to its overall residents due to some of these areas outside of the contiguous town limits. These unincorporated areas are typically surrounded by the boundary of Hope, of Hope Mills and they share the same services such as school district libraries and commercial services. However, for services like police, fire, public works, they face challenges for areas that are not located within the town. In some of these instances, you may have someone that lives in a certain area like Rockfish Road that receives services from the town, and they have a neighbor or someone across the street who does not receive these services because um, of these unincorporated areas. Um, <coughs> if you're outside of town limits, you're basically inside of the Hope Mills MIA. Now, in terms of legislative actions, um, we've been in communications with the state legislature regarding a proposal to consider um, legislative annexation, and the state informed staff that they would be willing to work with the town to introduce a bill that would allow for this proposal to move forward. Um, at the February 5th, 2018 board meeting, the town board approved resolution 2018 in support of local legislation pertaining to unincorporated properties. Now, in terms of the focus areas, um, we, ident we analyzed the entire uh, town of Hope Mills limits and we identified six possible focus areas. Um, area one is Traymore Village. Area two, we're calling it Kensington Village. 
Calling Area 3, C. Wayne Collier. Area 4 is Camden Road. Area 5 is I-95 Industrial. Area 6 is South Main Street. In total, all six of these focus areas encompass a total of 2,773.72 acres of land and follow the recently amended Town of Hope Mills Municipal Influence Area 10 and 20 year plan boundaries. If you recall, about this time last year, uh, we worked with the county to kind of reallocate our MIA into two sections. So any area that you see we're focusing on, the boundaries that we actually uh, considered match that uh, newly adopted plan from the county. <coughs> all right, so this is an overall map of the recommended study areas. You see all six outlined. Um, again, the total acreage is uh, 2,700 plus um, acres. So let's get into to um, focus area one. This is the Traymore Village area. This is an area of view. You'll see the, the focus area outlined in red. You can, you can barely see, but the, the item in yellow, the areas in yellow, those are the town limits. Um, this area is bound to the west by Waldo's Beach, bound to the north by Traymore Village. Um, Valley Inn and Village Green is bound to the south um, in their uh, commercial areas uh, to the east. In terms of uh, local analysis, this particular focus area is approximately 310.70 acres in size. It encompasses 52 parcels. Uh, it, it basically <coughs> creates a direct connection between Traymore Village and the western contiguous town of Hope Mills limits boundaries. Uh, and it's mostly undeveloped land. What you see with this local analysis is just a location of uh, recently approved developments in the area. You see Valley in Phase 2 um, to the south, Jack Brits to the west. Uh, the crossings um, is located in the heart of this focus area and obviously Traymore Village is to the northwest. In terms of zoning, uh, this area is made up of a variety of zoning classifications, uh, rural residential, R6A, mixed use, C2. In terms of the Southwest plan, it designates this area for low density residential development with a 2030 growth plan designating this area for urban development. Um, this is also a crucial map. Uh, this is the location of water and sewer. Um, in terms of the availability of water and sewer, it's only currently water provided along portions of Rockfish Road uh, with very uh, limited sewer. Um, you have very limited water and sewer along Camden Road as well. Um, and you have water and sewer along Waldo's Beach. There is no existing water and sewer provided within the undeveloped portions of this area. This area is crucial because with our agreement we have with PwC, um, it does <laughs> Um, dictate that if this area is developed, then the developed portions would have to be uh, water to <coughs> be provided by the developer. But the general statute requires that if we take legislative action, there are certain areas that we have to actually provide water and sewer to this area. Um, typically, my understanding is that it's along the peripheral areas, but staff will work with PwC to determine the exact location that we'd be required to install water and sewer, but this gives you uh, a pretty good example of where the existing water and sewer currently um, lies. And these are just some photographs that I took um, of some of these vacant areas. This is uh, off of Applegate. This is a... Um, the uh, uh, the end of phase two in Valley Inn. Um, this is off of Bretton Woods Drive. This is off of uh, Oldenburg Lane. Now, from what staff is understanding, um, when the developers of Valley Inn two come in with Valley Inn three, they're probably going to extend into this vacant area, which ultimately uh, pro will provide access to Valley Inn off of Camden Road. So that's one of the connections that this focus area is trying to make. This is uh, another um, portion of Standard Bread and Valley in Phase 2. This is commercial along Camden Road. This is uh, Waldo's Beach. This is the vacant area behind the crossings, um, off, also off of Waldo's Beach. This is uh, off of Rockfish Road. And this is now taking us into focus area number two, which is Kensington Village. Um, 
This is bound to the south by Camden Road. Um, it's bound to the north by existing um, multifamily development. And area two actually starts, if you're following in your uh, manual, um, area two is chapter three, it starts on page 18. Um, what you also have here is uh, this focus area is 429.92 acres. Um, it's a total of 111 parcels that make up this area. We're calling it Kensington Village, but it's not the actual existing Kensington Village residential neighborhood. We're just calling it that because that's a key development in the area. The existing Kensington Village development is located in the town, but if you can see with this map, it's in the heart of this focus area. Um, one of the things that this focus area accomplishes is it fills a major um, area along Camden. Um, it's a directly adjacent to, again, the Kensington Village development. Some of the challenges in this area is that many of the existing roads are uh, unimproved dirt roads. In terms of zoning, um, you have <coughs> typically rural residential, R6A, which is single family, family residential. Um, CP in some areas. Southwest plan calls for low density residential and mixed use in this area. 2030 growth plan calls for urban development. Um, I whited this area out just to give you um, a snapshot of the fact that there is no water and sewer anywhere located inside these boundaries as well. Um, as you can see on this map, there is extensive water and sewer in the area but none um, located within this. So back to the same uh, comment I made earlier about area one, um, in the event that this does move forward, the town would not only be required to extend water and sewer throughout this area, but we'd have to bring the um, roadways up to town style DOT standards as well. So these are just some photographs uh, of that area as well. This is off Camden Road. This is also off Camden Road. Um, I'm going to take you inside this development so you can see. This is Fame Lane inside this area. This is Brown Road inside this area. It's also Brown Road. This is Ellis Jackson Road, Camden Road. And this takes us now into Area 3. Um, so Area 3 we're calling C. Wayne Collier. Um, this area um, is... Rockfish Road bisects this area. If you recall, we're currently having some meetings with uh, NCDOT and Cumberland County because this area is um, does experience a significant amount of flooding. So that does um, that. I would consider that to be the most crucial aspect of this area. Um, some of the makeup of this area is an existing mobile home park in this area. Um, you do have unimproved <coughs> streets in this area as well. In terms of local analysis, this um, area is approximately 137.54 acres. There's a total of 139 parcels located within this um, focus area. It does fill an area along Camden and Rockfish Road. And again, there's major, major flooding areas um, within portions of Rockfish. In terms of zoning, uh, this area is also made up of primarily residential. There's some mixed-use zone properties in the area, surrounding area. Um, Southwest plan calls for medium density residential and mixed-use development with the 2030 growth plan call, calling for urban development as well. Um, this is your existing water and sewer. There is. Um, Existing development on unimproved streets or unimproved infrastructure within this area. Uh, again, we're working with um, Cumberland County Schools and NCDOT to see if they'd be willing to find, help us find a solution um, to the flooding areas. And water and sewer is currently available only on Camden. Um, so, again, same thing happens. General statute kicks in um, if this area is considered. These are photographs uh, along Almond Road in Camden. This is this in commercial. This is off of University Ave. This is State Street. This is Love Drive. This is Old Plank Road. This is Rockfish. This is a mobile home park off Rockfish. This is an existing commercial off of Diva Circle. 
Now it takes us into area four, which we're calling Camden Road. Um, this area, um, all, the northernmost portions of this area are the actual MIA boundaries of Hope Mills. This makes a direct connection to Hope Mills Lake. Um, if you see the northern, uh, the north eastern portion of this area where you see where Legion Road is. That is an area that we had been uh, approaching the North Carolina Commerce about opportunity zones. We were trying to get opportunity zones, and which is basically a mechanism to uh, achieve additional funding in low-income areas. We were trying to get it established off Ellison, but the state did designate that portion of Legion Road as an opportunity zone, which is one of the main reasons why we pulled that section in as well. Um, <coughs> You do have some developed um, areas within this um, focus area, and you have a significant amount of massive, of, of undeveloped um, land as well along Camden and Elk Road. In terms of uh, the size, this focus area is approximately 933.94 acres in size. It's a total of 139 properties. Um, it's, again, it matches the Hope Mills 20-year MIA plan. Uh, and again, area along Legion, north of Elk, was recently adopted as an opportunity zone. In terms of uh, existing zoning, um, Southwest Plan designated this area for low density residential and heavy commercial with the 2030 <coughs> growth vision plan uh, designating this for urban development. In terms of water and sewer, um, you also have very limited water and sewer within this focus area. Um, there is sewer available on the western portion of the area, but there is no sewer along, uh, current sewer along Camden Road and limited water, and there is no water and sewer along George Owens and Elk. So again, that's the same challenge that you'd face um, if we did move forward with this area. As you can see, uh, it's pretty established water and sewer in the surrounding area. These are some of the uh, photographs. This is an existing multifamily development off of Pen uh, Big Pine Drive. This is off of uh, the, the dead end portion of Old Bluff Mill Road. This is Camden and Elk. This is Legion. This is the area where the Opportunity Zone is. Um, this is Davis Street. This is also off Big Pine. This is Big Pine. This is Marazoff Drive. This is an existing mobile home development. This is the far end of that development, uh, which is basically abutting the Hope Mills Lake. This is off of Old Bluff Mill Road. This is Camden. And now we're into Area 5, which we're calling the I-95 Industrial. Um, this is an area that some consider to be an island because it does not touch any of the contiguous portions of Oak Mills. This is right across I-95. Um, the actual size of it is 674.80 acres, with, and it compri it's comprised of 52 parcels. Um, it does fill uh, areas that allow for existing separated areas to be consolidated. Um, and it includes area along sand, areas along Sand Hill Road, which were also recommended for addition. When we did the plan with the county for our MIA, they actually um, recommended that we add additional areas to our MIA. So the boundaries along Sand Hill Road does match those recommendations. Um, you'll see that uh, the developed areas that we have, we've uh, recently annexed in a brewery off of Corporation Drive. Uh, we've recently approved a new gas station development off Chicken Foot. The existing industrial off of the uh, 301 service road is an existing trucking company um, that we feel would uh, possibly we benefit from um, commercial revenues. <coughs> In terms of the zone and land use, um, this area is comprised of um, rural residential CP um, manufacturing, um, R10, which is also residential. Southwest plan calls for um, commercial, heavy commercial, and suburban residential. 2030 growth plan calls for urban and urban friends development. In terms of water and sewer, um, most of the roads in this area are state maintained. 
Um, water is available along Chicken Foot Road, but no sewer. Um, you have water and sewer available along Corporation Drive, and water and sewer is available in various locations within this area. Um, photographs of Chicken Foot and Morocco. Sand Hill Drive, this is near the Walmart Distribution Center. <coughs> this is uh, residential development off of Sand Hill Drive. This is also Sand Hill. Um, this is a uh, trucking company off of Corporation Drive. This is also Corporation. This is also Corporation. And this is the service road um, off of the freeway leading to the existing development that uh, I just referenced. Now we're on to our final area, which is area six. We're calling this South Main. Um, this fills an area that we feel would make a connection to the um, area five, I-95 industrial and the southernmost contiguous limits of the town. Um, if you recall, we also just recently approved uh, a 95, a portion of a 95 um, acre mixed use development off the of South Main. That is not located in this focus area, but we felt that it was essential um, as a, a, a recently <coughs> approved high end development that could help extend these limits. This development will be required to annex once they do apply for water and sewer service. So that's coming to us anyway. We did not include that into this focus area. But we do feel that this would be a catalyst that help drive these southern limits towards um, the I-95 area. This area is 286.82 acres in size. It is comprised of 226 parcels. Um, again, there's a large scale 95 acre development that was just recently approved. Um, it connects the town limits again to the I 95 area and some of the work that's being done. I think we're all aware of the exit 41 uh, construction being done, and DLT is um, currently working on a widening of South Main um, through this area as well. In terms of zonings, you have a primarily, um, you have commercial along South Main, but if you notice in this area, um, a lot of that is being cleared out as you get close to the overpass. Um, but the, the area is comprised, comprised of residential, commercial, um, planned industrial, and some C2P. <coughs> Um, Southwest plan calls for medium density mixed use housing and the 2030 growth plan calls for urban and urban fringe development. And as it relates to water and sewer, as you can see, there is no water and sewer currently available along South Main. It's very limited water and sewer in surrounding established residential neighborhood. There's actually none uh, located to the Southwest um, and water and sewer is available in various locations within the area. And these are some of the photographs. As you can see, this is uh, some a, a large portion of the areas along South Main leading up to 95 are currently vacant. This is some commercial leading up um, through that area. This is another portion of Main Street, South Main. This is Red Maple in South Main. This is existing uh, commercial on South Main. This is also another portion, and this is South Main and Parkton. Um, ironically, well, not ironically, but um, just to add another piece of information, Parkton Road will bisect that 95-acre development. So this view here um, is actually located probably in the heart of that proposed 95-acre development. This is another portion of South Main. And this is the area I was talking about uh, as you get close to the, the, the exit. Um, a lot of this area, these areas are being cleared out. That's basically it. Um, what you have in here is we took the approach of just providing you with a significant amount of data. Um, what you have in here is every chapter for every section has specific um, detailed information from every department, um, from planning and zoning, stormwater, police, fire, 
public works and inspections. Everyone gave specific information. Um, so I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that you may have. Um, again, we're going to work with PwC because the general statute does uh, require, I think it's a three and a half year period that we have to put, extend service, water and sewer service to any area that we consider. Um, PwC will work with us to help identify the specific areas we would have to extend to. We would not have to provide lateral uh, access to every lot, but we will have to provide water and sewer service extending through certain areas. Um, but I would like to uh, just open up the floor to any questions that you may have to any of the specific departments um, to go into detail about some of the findings that they mm -hmm. were able to provide. That, sir. Any commissioner has a comment or question at this time? <coughs> um, I go first, I guess. Okay. Um, has anybody run any numbers for? cost benefit analysis what you also have in here is across the board every department has indicated that the best way for them to make a final determination is if we actually put uh, hire an engineering firm to actually do a study I do think with departments like stormwater and public works it's almost impossible for them to tell you the cost <coughs> of bringing like an area like Kensington Village, every one of those dirt roads up to DLT standards with curb and gutter and water and sewer installation. So what you're gonna see in here is that most of these departments are recommending that a study be done for that purpose. Yeah, I mean, you know I'm a numbers guy, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't wanna know that it'd be some kind of uh, a win-win kind of situation if we're gonna provide services. What was the time frame? four and a half years? Three and a half, Three and um, a half. based on general statute. And departments like my um, planning and inspections, the, the impact will be minimal um, because if we're talking about vacant land, if we annex it in, I just basically work with the county to do an initial zoning. Um, um, in, inspections, if there's increased permits, we would just treat them as such. Um, I do think he... Um, um, you will see some departments talk about maybe increased staff levels and things of that nature, but inspections and zoning, the, the impact will be minimal. But I do think, like I said, with public works, with um, and, um, with stormwater, you're going to need some specific numbers um, tied to engineering studies. Um, you do have mutual aid with the fire department, and um, there are different uh, comments from the police department as well, but I do think to adequately address um, your comments with respect to numbers, um, that's where you'll see the recommendations of uh, engineering so, study. Be so conducted. if the board was decided to move forward, uh, what kind of turnaround would it be for that due diligence to be done that we're talking about? Um, I, think, and I, I think based on my understanding of the process, I think we have until mid-March to actually make a determination on if we want to move forward with any specific areas. And I think after that time, I think they give us a two-year period to do the data collection in terms of the study. I'm not sure exactly how long the study would take. I don't think it would take that long. But I do think that we uh, accomplished the first step by adopting a resolution, and then we would just engage the legislature to see if they would uh, accept the bill on whatever areas that you guys would possibly feel comfortable with but they would give us a period of time um, to do the data collection and, and the study to determine the cost so we would not be committed at that point um, until we get our due diligence done correct that is my that is my understanding so it would just be a pretty much a kind of a letter of interest or a, something of that nature yeah. that we're interested in looking into the matter but we still have a certain you time about frame. Two years of due diligence to do. Yes, that's that's my current understanding of the process. Okay, that's all. I have. <coughs> okay, <coughs> Madam Mayor. Alrighty, Chancellor. Yes. Has the town departments prioritized the six areas, or recommended a prior a priority list for the six areas? I think the only information you have from staff <coughs> is just raw data on what okay. they call it. I don't think they actually uh, prioritized any. We studied the whole town and these were the six areas we felt were um, 
focus areas that we should um, concentrate on, but I don't think anyone actually determined if there's a hierarchy on which ones that we should. Um, I do think if you look at some of the data that they, they gave you, it puts you in a position on, on being able to say, okay, this area doesn't appear that it has too many issues, and then that way we can possibly uh, start prioritizing. It, well, and that's, that's kind of where my question is, is who's going to drive the train for the priority list? Is that going to be the board or is that going to be? That's the board. Uh, um, based on. approve that list, who's going to recommend it? Basically, you guys would take this data that we okay. provided and you would determine which areas that you want us to proceed with. Okay. <coughs> so the priority ultimately would rest on the board. You mean all these addresses in the back you want us to determine which ones would? No. <laughs> the, addresses, the addresses are just. Uh, meant to give you an idea of the specific locations within they're, they're listed as per area so yes uh, if we're concentrating on that area we are essentially looking at all those addresses under that area yeah. yes yeah. but what i'm getting at is the data from the departments are what i'm asking you to actually take into consideration on whether or not you feel um, that certain areas need to be prioritized higher than others Do we have an estimate of what all these surveys would cost? It's what our due diligence costs would be. Wasn't there some studies done by Mr. Bailey years ago about the cost of some of these areas? I'm not sure exactly what the amount was. I think he was just focusing on PwC. <coughs> uh, I do think in recent years, I think um, a study was done uh, to calculate the current program that Stormwater has, and I think that cost roughly about a hundred thousand um, but that was just on stormwater um, ultimately we would be uh, looking to get an analysis on stormwater um, roadway improvements and, and curb and gutter and the whole nine so over a two-year period what would you estimate if we if we said right now we want to move forward all six of these locations what kind of cost would we be laying out just to make a decision whether it's even cost effective to do it that I would have to, I, I, I do not uh, feel, I don't have enough data that, to give you a raw number. More than, more than a quarter million? Yeah. Possibly. The staff have any ballpark? Half a million dollars? Quarter, million maybe? I don't know if you can put a number on these six areas. It's I'm, talking, I'm talking about this to do the due diligence. Just a survey. I think Ms. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell is talking about what could we could we estimate the cost of just what it would take to do the study. I don't think he's asking what the study would yield as a cost. I think he's saying if we decided we want to study all six, how much is it going to cost for an engineer firm to come in and do this work? And do all six at one time. Yeah. And just as a reference, I think um, the the study that was done on stormwater um, was a hundred thousand just for water i mean just for the stormwater department and so that did not incorporate <clears throat> extension of water and sewer services it did not incorporate bringing up uh, all these roads because you have some areas where even if it's not a dirt road it's an unimproved road areas like uh focus one where you have applegate that's a roadway that is currently in the county if we were to take it in we would have to bring that up to dot standard so there's a cost associated with that as well even though it is a paved roadway Chancellor, take me through just one area. I'm, I'm just going to pick area three, which okay. is seen Wayne Collier. Take me through the process. If the board was to say this is our priority, we want to start with this area first. What's the process? Um, I think you would ultimately um, contact the legislature, let them know you wanted to move forward this area. Okay. If they support it, we would do an engineering study on what it would cost. Um, because the general statute mandates that all services that we currently provide for in-town uh, residents have to be extended to these areas, full services. And they give us a two-and-a-half-year period once, I guess, 
the ultimate decision has been made. So let's say we start the process, we do the study, they adopt it, and they officially do the annexation. Then we'd have a three, uh, three and a half year period to provide services to these areas. Is that per area? Is that all six areas? Or is that how we? I think it's a three and a half year period <laughs> based on everything you annex. So if you annex four areas, you got three and a half years to provide services to all the all areas. For that that's yeah. so where it's I'm not going. per area it's so it's, it doesn't area. say you get a three and a half year period per <clears> area <throat> it just ultimately says what they ultimately support and approve and move forward with a, a legislative annexation you have two and a half year, three and a half years to provide those services in those areas that you're ultimately trying to incorporate into town limits okay per area okay Oh, thank you, Mayor. It would be possible to get a mm -hmm. projected cost to do the due diligence by area from staff. Uh, he's asking, is it possible to get a, a rough estimate on the due diligence cost per area? I mean, just to get a some estimates. Yeah, I think I think we can do that. That would be helpful, I would think. Yeah, I agree. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I think at one time when Mr. Bailey was studying this, it was a little over $2 million just to do Rockfish Road area. And, and, and I do think um, what you're saying is correct. I do think that Mr. Bailey only focused on water and sewer, but I do not know um the totality of the areas that he was looking at um i do know we had talked to pwc about uh king's mill um recently um because they're uh, located in the town they are in need of water and sewer um and we just did a really really rough calculation and i think it was close to 3.5 a million just to extend water and sewer in that area. So we're not talking about something that's going to be uh, inexpensive. Uh, it's going to be something that's going to be a huge <laughs> undertaking. But right now we wanted to just get you uh, all the data and analysis of these areas in your hands so you can um, possibly look at it and, and direct us in a, a position on to take on which areas that you're interested in. Yes, ma'am. You have a comment? Nobody will, McLean. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't have any questions for you, Chancellor. I just want time to see the data that the staff yeah. has presented and see what, what they have to say first before I ask any questions. Right. Madam Mayor, yes. <clears throat> I think if we move through this process in each area, we don't just need to ask the question what benefit of the town where the <coughs> town would it be but what we can give back to the residents of the projected area of annexation we want to be sure we can give those people something in return if they're brought into our jurisdiction i agree and i will say um if you notice there are some established the uh, neighborhoods in some of these areas, but primarily you're dealing with vacant land. Um, there's, it's impossible to look at an area like Kensington Village and not incorporate some of that. There are residences are established in that area, but the area like Focus Area One, um, you're primarily dealing with all vacant land. So every area won't be uh, uh, an incorporation of 45 properties that are developed. So if you see 59 parcels located in area one, it may not be actual houses on about maybe 20 of those. So other areas have a more developed um, um, area, but um, some of these areas and um, large portions of these areas are undeveloped. So just because, I mean, I gave you the, the property listing, that doesn't mean that there's an actual house on that property. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have people who live in these areas who may have an opinion about annexation. It's just that we primarily try to see if we could uh, avoid a s large established neighborhoods um, with this analysis. What did you say again? The total acreage was twenty seven seventy five. Twenty seven hundred seven hundred and thirty three, I think. Twenty seven seventy five. 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 Twenty
7372. Yeah. And that's just all that's just the collection of all six areas. I, mean, I don't think our budget can sustain the due diligence and annexation of all six of these areas at one pop unless um I'd imagine it'd be several million dollars. I don't know where maybe finance can tell us where that money would come from on the front end. Uh, granted we'd get some tax uh, revenue into the future. But I'd want to see some modeling. Yeah, I, I think I think that we could definitely do that. that service or whatever. How are we going to sustain that kind mm -hmm. of uh, acquisition if that's what the will of the board is? Uh, it has to be sustainable, obviously. I mean, you might be able to do one or two sections and still not feel it on the budget as much, obviously. Madam Mayor. I look at some of this and think it's a little bit of a stretch of a donut hole. A true donut hole that that I think most people think of. I mean, you're talking about large portions of areas and not all of those portions are touching. You're, some of the portion is touching Hope Mills portion and then you're reaching beyond it and calling it an area to me. That's the way I would look at as a citizen that's sitting out in front of me. There are true areas that I do see that we have a lot of true donut holes that are throughout Hope Mills. <clears throat> and then there's some, Seaway Collier is another, is an area that I would say is an area that is a donut hole in itself. Correct. I mean, Correct. it is, it, you know, it is for the most part surrounded by yeah. Hope Mills property. <coughs> but there are other areas that I'm looking at and there's, you're, you know, you you got a piece this big, and it's just this portion right here that's touching Hope Mills, and then we're stretching out beyond, and that seems a little bit <coughs> of a stretch for me. So that's just my point. I think that's one of the main reasons why we did not give specific recommendations. We just wanted to give you guys just raw data on our analysis from our perspective departments and allow you guys to make the ultimate decision. Um, but there were areas, we just looked at all incorporated areas um, and, and tried to strategize on which were the most important that we feel we should focus on. But again, that's one of the main reasons why we didn't give a specific recommendation on each one. We just felt that it would be it'd be more prudent just to give you all the analysis data of each area and let you guys determine Madam if you Mayor. wanted to yes, move sir. forward. Chancellor, what's, yes. the, what's the timeline on the decision that we need to make? I think we have until March 24th to decide on if we want to move forward. March 24th. Um, yes. And again, I think we have a two year period after that to actually do the engineering analysis. So we have a town board meeting on March 18th. Yes. So if we're going to move forward with any of these six areas, we'll have to make a decision on March 18th, Mayor. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Is that yes. your recommendation? That's that's correct. If we're going to make any decision at that, all, it's March that is, 18th. That is correct. And is, it, is that with or without a public hearing? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure if the general statute requires a public hearing. I think you would probably have one. I think one. it does, but I'll take a look too. Yeah. Because, I mean, if, if March 24th is, is the deadline for us to make a decision, then March 18th is the night of the decision. And I, I want to make sure that, that we afford the residents opportunity. With, with respect to um, how any annexation is going to affect residents, I think it would be uh, wise to have a public hearing. Um, I think that's just a, a fair thing to do to give them a, a chance to be, a, to be able to speak. Well, I, I mean, tonight is a work session, yeah. and we're still allowing them to speak. So I think mm -hmm. it wouldn't be any harm doing a, um, a public hearing. But I think we would check with legal to see what the requirements are. Even if, whether it's required or not, I still believe that's that's what I'm saying. That we should, and I recommend that we have a public hearing. Yeah, I agree. If mayor, we're going to make a decision on March 18th. Right. If, the, if if that's the way we're going to go. And I think you can make the decision to request uh, the ability to do the annexation, but you don't have to follow through with the annexation unless you get 
the totals and the data that would that's, warrant that's, it. That's what the two-year period words, is so for. What would happen would be it wouldn't mean that you're actually going to do it. It just means you're giving permission to go out and do the uh, the mm -hmm. data and the due diligence so that what you could do is then you could have evidence that this would be wise decision or this how much this would cost. Mm -hmm. I think that's the reason for doing it in areas, focus yeah. areas, rather than doing one big uh, showing of all the properties. And then you could look at within these areas, those true donut holes. Like I'm looking, I've got C. Wayne Collier in front of me, and, and that's the one I think has always been very confusing because mm -hmm. you go back and forth Hope Mills to Cumberland that's, County. That's my priority area. And I, think, and I think so if you're looking at it, um, and it's also an area that's showing some increased growth because of Millstone out that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm just looking at it as, as if you request to, to look at all six areas, then you can narrow the focus down after that when you do your due diligence That's because correct. you could judge how much is it going to cost. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, the, the hearing would be by area, I would assume, not just by one big mass. I think we would go uh, to the, each area for that hearing so that you would have an opportunity for the Sue <coughs> Wayne Collier area to to give us input and that way you would be fair to all and i think uh taking this approach also mm -hmm. puts you in a position where you're not um spending a significant amount of money doing studies on all six and you're only interested in looking at several um one or two you may not be interested in all six of these areas but i do think putting you in a position where you can make the determination let's move forward with these two areas then we actually do the engineering studies on those because there's a couple of areas that have already asked us about what they have to do to be in Extend because they want to be in Hope Mills uh, that aren't in these. You know, there's out off of uh, out Crystal Springs Road, out in that area off where we've got some spots out there off of Cumlin Road. I know that area there's been some requests. So, so really um, this would just show the main areas and there might be some that just voluntarily come yeah. forward. And That's ask correct. so it could that could change the way this looks too. Madam Mayor, yes, ma sir. I tend to agree with Commissioner Larson. If these places are encircled by existing town limits, three or four sides, then I think that's the ones we should concentrate on because they would be the ones that. Would, could benefit most from the annexation as well as the town. Uh, I don't know what our fire <coughs> department can handle with all the aid they have for our police department, but most of the areas that's encircled, like there's one out on uh, Heather Street, you were talking that's about sitting right by itself, a house completely surrounded by town. I don't think there's a question about a place like that. We service it now. Our garbage cans are sitting in their driveway. Our police department goes there. Our fire department goes by there every day. The places that would give us less difficulty to give proper service to is what I'd like to see us concentrate on first, and that would be the ones that are bordered by three to four sides of the town limits. Does that make any sense? Yeah, perfect. Okay, other comments? Could we get the cost of the surveys by March 18th? I think we we'll, we can explore um, to see if we can get an estimate um, on the cost of uh, doing the survey work. <coughs> by section, right? Yeah. So I was, um, at the town hall that we had several years ago that got a little feisty in the rec center. <laughs> um, and I think that the main issue was that they felt it was extending outside. So I really do think that some of, even some of these areas, there may be specific donut holes within that area that really are surrounded, but it's hard to tell by this because this is just an area. An area. So, um, I think that, you know, regardless of, I'm going to say that mine also would be C. Wayne Collier would be <coughs> a, a no-brainer. Um, but I do think 
that there are other areas, there are donut holes within these little, these yeah. huge areas that could be, that are true donut holes. And I, I would like to, um, just speaking on specifically uh, on Seaway and Collier, I do think, um, just pay very close attention to the different analysis you're seeing from the departments. I, do, I don't think you're seeing anything. You're basically getting um, uh, comments that indicate this is what I'm going to need if you ultimately make the decision on this area. So um, in the event that you choose a certain area, I think we should just make sure that that department um, has the is provided with the, the the funding mechanisms needed to provide those resources um i think c wayne Collier is a very good example because we're working with dot and cumberland county schools to see if they can come up with a solution if that solution is not um created and we ultimately pull forward then the responsibility falls on the town to be able to do that um, and if we're going to ultimately pull that in then the feedback you're going to get from stormwater oh, is going to be. That's a DOT road, though. Isn't that where the problem is at Rockfish? Yes. That's DOT, though. That's not. But if we take in the area, the area of flooding mm -hmm. or will be on property that is in the town limits. It, well, it, it is now. Part of it. Sturbridge is. Sturbridge. That's my neighborhood. The, that whole area that, from the clear cutting of Seaway and Collier, that road flooding, the town maintains that road already. You pave it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And then the <coughs> road. What is it? Summer. 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 Summer, I believe it's pronounced in it. Summer, Summer Drive, Summer. I think, is D.O. Yeah. That's not ours until you get out to the... Behind the school. Right. Behind the school. And that's a, that, that issue is obviously a, a multi-faceted problem because of the clear cutting, too, so... If, if the town staff is going to engage an engineer for any of these areas, we would have to, you guys will have to let us know what specific information that you are requesting from them. Um, if it's just a cost analysis, then that's fine. But if there's anything else outside of that, because anything that we ask them to do is going, that's going to either increase or decrease the cost of that study. So we would need to know on the front end before we engage an engineering firm what exactly, what, what, what's the information that you're looking to get from, from the survey? Okay, well, so, Mayor, yes. I guess on March 18th, do we, want to do we want to decide tonight on one or two areas that we would like the staff to look at, or do we want to come back on March 18th to <coughs> those one or two areas? I'm not I, prepared I mean, tonight. I can't do that tonight. I, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. just asking. I'm just asking the We're board. just getting this information tonight. Yeah. I mean, do we want to come back on March 18th with one or two areas that we would like staff to, to look at? Ultimately, <laughs> what I, I would suggest you take this information back, study mm -hmm. it, and then um, maybe if you wanted to get us some feedback prior to March 18th, that's fine. But I do not think you, you have um, – you may not be able to really digest all this tonight. And to I think they could email questions That's that the then could be answered at our next meeting, which would, if possible, before the March 18th. This meeting. is a lot of data to yeah, take. Yeah, I know that we've tonight. done that previously. Is we could go through and and uh, did, you know <coughs> make notations, but then email those questions so that then the answer could be available um, prior to them trying to come to a decision. That's why I was asking to answer the process and the timeline. I agree. Between now and March 24th. And what, and I might be wrong on this, but doesn't 
PwC offer some type of uh, information for us as far as the uh, a projection? I um, thought that they do some things for us that we don't necessarily I, I have know to pay for. And Mark Brown is here. Um, <laughs> I know they will work with us to help us determine the um, areas that we'd be required to install. I'm not sure if they actually have a mechanism to help us determine the cost. I think he can probably speak more of that. Yes. <coughs> I hate they wouldn't get free. Mayor Warner, um, we, we, we do not provide do estimates on how much it would cost to extend water and sewer, so we don't provide any information to developers or anybody. We would be glad to work with the town and say, well, if you want to extend water and sewer into this area, here's where our water lines are, here's where our sewer mains are. Um, our general counsel is willing to work with your town attorney to make sure we have the same understanding of what the general statute requires the town to do, okay. which would allow you to determine what you would have to do. So I'll, I'll just give you a couple examples. So if you're familiar with the Big Bang, Big Bang annexation in Fayetteville, in that situation, the PwC infrastructure that was in place already allowed <coughs> the city to delay the installation of inf the, the sewer and water to individual properties for a number of years. We're still in the middle of extending all of that. So that was like, uh, I want to say 14,000 parcels. So it's been over a number of years. But that's because the, the, the state statute was met at the time the annexation was done. Um, the city of Fayetteville has also been looking at some of the donut holes issues. For example, the Shaw Heights area, we know that that yeah. area does not meet those requirements and so that if the city decided to annex that area, um, they would have to extend water and sewer in that time frame that Chancellor talked about. So I think one of the things is we're not sure yet because the study hasn't been done what the state requirement would be and we would work with you to help you understand that so you can get better information to decide if you want to go forward with that. Okay. So we'll work with you there to help you do that. Um, and our general counsel, we have a lot of experience with those, so he certainly would work with you. I think the main thing is that we have the same understanding each other about what the requirement is so we can work with you to identify what, so you have the financial cost estimates to decide is this worth you pursuing or not for the water and sewer part of it. Okay. Okay. That's good. good. Does it help you? That's good. Okay, okay good. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming this evening, too. <coughs> Any other, other questions? I'm ready to hear from some of the people. <coughs> All right. What we'll do now is the, those of you in the audience here, where we are, we're at that stage of just gathering information. So there's not really a decision to be made. And even before a decision could be made, there's got to be a lot of input as far as the cost factors and those kinds of things. So at this time, we'll open up for public comments. Um, and I'll turn it over first to uh, Mr. Neil Yarborough. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Neil Yarbrough. I represent the four volunteer fire departments that surround the town and have served you for many, many years and are serving and are running calls into your town every day under either mutual aid or, uh, or service agreements. Uh, I would point out to you that each of these volunteer fire departments uh, are funded by tax districts which the people themselves voted in. In other words, the value of having their fire service was recognized by the citizens and they voted in themselves a tax for this service. That leads me to the point that I'd like to talk about. I've been involved in annexation issues in Cumberland County for over 40 years, both the legal, the practical, and perhaps even the political. Uh, the three methods that have been identified uh, the city, uh, involuntary city initiated, initiated. What y'all are getting ready to do is to get some authority to do something and get some responsibility to do something that you don't have a price for. You don't know what it's going to cost the town and you're asking for something <laughs> that you don't know the cost for. If you were to use the statutory method, one of the requirements would be 
do you have the resources? Is it is it feasible? What is the feasibility of doing this annexation? And can we provide those services? You're really putting the cart before the horse. I certainly hope that before you ever considered getting the authority or the responsibility to annex, that you know what the cost is. You owe that to your citizens, and certainly to these citizens that may be getting taxed, newly taxed, without doing it. The voluntary system, right now, there are, there are two ways that people can come into town if they want to. Voluntary annexation is relatively easy. If there are people who <coughs> truly want it and need it, you know how to do it. It's very, it's very straightforward. Even the involuntary method is fairly straightforward if the people want it. E, uh, un, under the days. And you would also do cost estimates. It's just practical. <laughs> the legislative way is a bypass. It is a backdoor way of annexing people that don't want to be annexed. Uh, I mean, just face it. It's a land grab. It's a money grab. If you start picking out, and if you start picking out which districts, which services you are, you're going to be accused of cherry picking. Think about it. Now, also, at a certain point in time, you depend, the town of Hope Mills depends on these volunteer fire departments. Oh, let me say one other thing. Although I represent the four volunteer fire departments in this matter, I also have a dog in this fight. I own land in the area to be annexed, and I represent clients that have land in this area. But I want to talk about the fire departments tonight. Well, I guess I won't. <laughs> I guess I won't. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I, I can tell you, as it stands right now, all, vo all four volunteer fire departments, without any further information and without y'all doing a feasibility study and out, without you analyzing the impacts to the volunteer fire departments, are stone fast against it. Thank you. I guess just to clear up just a little bit, that's what they would be. We would be doing before we moved would be those studies to find out how much it's going to cost the town and how much it's going to cost the taxpayers. So that would be that's we wouldn't we wouldn't move forward with trying to get the legislative authority until we had the data and the due diligence to make sure that we knew. Uh, and that's why they put focused areas instead of uh, <coughs> trying to do all of it because we know we the town could not undertake a major task like that and the hearings I think the individual hearings would be so those individual areas could determine whether or not it would be good for their area to be annexed in because in some cases uh, which we've made note to they're already receiving the services but they're not in Hope Mills and you it comes to be a fact when you call the Hope Mills police and you find out that you're really in the county and you've got to call uh, the sheriff's department we see that happen a lot because of the proximity uh, so those areas I think if you if you think about it uh, we've had some when we went to waste management as a privatizing tra uh, trash service by their tax records they use that to distribute trash cans and also to pick up trash and all of a sudden you had people that uh, were not eligible because they weren't in <coughs> Hope Mills, but they really thought they were in Hope Mills because of where they live. So some of these hearings that we could have for these different zones, I think, would help those, especially new residents that don't realize they may have a Hope Mills address, but they're not really in Hope Mills. Um, but, yeah, I appreciate your comments, and I think we're very fortunate to have very strong volunteer fire departments in our area. We appreciate them, and that's why we do the arrangements that we do uh, to give back to them uh, and pay them for the service they do for us. Uh, you know, we we use a lot of uh, Stony Point Fire Department as an example because they're the, our biggest partner, I would say. And I know that Chief Hodges, we try to have that good relationship because we know that we need the fire departments. We know that they're very important to us. Next, we have Mohammed Timraz. Did I say that right? Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm actually going to speak about the area I live in. It's Brown Road, right next to uh, uh, Kensington Village. We, uh, I've been living on this road for 15, and some people over here living for more than 20 years. We don't have any services. We don't ask for any services. We have our own water system. We have our own sewer system. 
We live on dirt road. We are not looking for paved road. We are not looking for water or sewer. I've been before in Fayetteville when they got annexed. The only thing I got is a trash can. That's it. And you look at the cost you guys are going to spend to provide us with the water and sewer. And the income you will get is tax. We pay in county tax. And we're going to actually, if you annex us, you're going to actually give us the water and sewer. It's going to cost a lot of money. And you're going to get taxes from us. We are five retirees, military retirees, senior citizen on limited income. We, can, we don't want to actually pay more taxes. We actually help the city of uh, Hope Mills when we purchase everything from the city. Yeah, we live in close proximity to the city of uh, the town of Hope Mills, but we belong to the county. My point is, it's going to cost a lot of money to give us water and sewer and maybe a trash can. And what you get probably will be way less. So uh, we like the way we live in. Some people actually, it's the majority of the Brown Road is undeveloped land. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't get much. Plus, we, we have wild, uh, wild uh, we have horses. People have a chicken. Uh, once we be a city, we'll be limited to what we grow, what we actually put on our land. We never ask for anything from the city or from the town of Hope Mills. And we like to keep it this way. It's only five houses on this road. It's next to, uh, next to the uh, Kensington Village. But from our road all the way down to Rockfish, it's unapproved. Uh, we would love to keep it this way. It's very quiet. And we, we solve our own problem. If it's water, sewer, plus also when it rained, we have our own uh, road improvement. We actually rake the road. We fix the road. You guys are going to be doing this to us if you are not paving the road. You're going to be every time it rains, you're going to come <coughs> and actually do it. We do it ourselves. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Next, we have Neil Smith. <coughs> Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. I didn't expect to do that when I came here tonight, but I'm here. And uh, it's unequivocally to say to you that there are reasons that you're here tonight. And the bottom one is that last one, legislative reasons. You're trying to do this in just a matter of days. And I understand why you're trying to do it due diligently. But there are some other issues that are resounding before us. It's clear there's not a long list of people that won't particularly join and be a part of a residence of the city of Hope Mills, and that gentleman told you precisely why. But I want to tell you why I'm not at this particular point in my life. Because back in the 80s, the beauty shop where my wife works was annexed into this city 25 plus years ago. To this day, I have no street lights, no sewer, no water. To this day, in that period of time, I personally have paid to this town in excess of $30,000 just to this town for no services. Now, that's a fact. So if you're having difficulty getting us services after 25 years, how much more difficulty are you going to have getting services to nearly 3,000 acres of land, which may be more than the whole entirety of the land you already have responsibilities for? I'm not sure. But I do think there's a dear concern about stewardship of the resources that we do have. And each one of you are very conscious about that and are uh, evidently trying to do that to your best ability. But it's not all about money only. It's about caring about the integrity of the town as we move it forward. I personally try to take care of the aesthetics of the place that I'm responsible for. When you ride by our home and you ride by our residence, I want it to look like someone cares about the land and the property here. You know, so that's what citizenship is about. No, I am not a citizen of the town of Hope Mills, but I do certainly pay a significant amount of money and I do spend my revenues in this town shopping as was very clearly made it before. Hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people spend their retail monies in this town who are not citizens. 
And they do that because the services are provided there, and that's a good thing. So I remind you, consider hardly what you're trying to do. Six areas? It seems unfamiliar to every one of you. Clearly, as was stated brilliantly, it is not a donut. That's what the issue says. Your, your own decree, and I'll read it to you and I'll stop, simply said, we're here to discuss donut annexation. I'll read it for you. The purpose of the discussion proposed is donut hole annexation and the recommendation from the town planning review committee. Your integrity, your, your wisdom, your, your geometry tells you it's not a donut. That's a donut, a hole in the middle of it. I thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for listening. Thank you, people. But we have wonderful fire departments that have served me well. Well, any confusion. <coughs> we have wonderful services <coughs> otherwise that have served me well. And I have some property that's in Hope Mills. No street lights, no sewer, no water. I pay my bills. Three acres, and I don't have anything from it after 30 nearly years. So I don't know what you can do with 3,000 acres, but you hadn't done too good with three acres. And uh, I ask you to consider that. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. And we appreciate that's the, the, the last the comments. We appreciate you being here tonight, and we do appreciate your comments. I think it's important for us to have meetings like this and to have the, the community have input. So before you would move forward on any of this, again, there has to be hearings, there has to be public input. It's not something that you can do without that. Um, <coughs> any other comments or information uh, that you need from either Mr. McLaughlin or the attorney? <coughs> okay, so the intent is to study this, uh, make notes, ask questions, and then um, the next time we would see this uh, would be March 18th. Is that <clears throat> where, what we're looking at? That's correct. Okay. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Ma'am. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who came out tonight, everyone who spoke. Uh, I think you all have very valid concerns. Some of you are happy where you're at and where you're living. My intent is not to, to try to change your lifestyle. My intent on a vote would be to make things better for you. And at this time, I'm not sure I can do anything to make life better for you. Maybe for your grandchildren or your, or your children, but we still need to get the numbers together. Uh, <coughs> as Mr. Yarbrough said, we don't have numbers yet. Uh, you're not gonna buy a car or a truck without numbers, are you? I don't think I would be interested in your <coughs> land without knowing what it's going to cost us. So, but thank you again for coming. I appreciate it very much that you're here this evening. Uh, you could be outside in the sleet and rain. Warm <laughs> in here. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. What exactly are we going to do on March 18th? By then, after looking, my understanding from what I've understood. What I understand is you would have looked at these different areas okay. and you would decide if you want to proceed with any one particular area or if you want to move with all the areas to find out if we okay. can do those due diligent things. You're not making the decision to um, annex anything in. You're just trying to get the data to find out okay. about each area. And again, I guess determining which ones you believe uh, are the true areas that would be donut holes. I, I think that's what we're, he, I think what the staff has done is put together information about the areas that are okay. continuous to the town. They bump up mm -hmm. to town property somewhere. And then that's where these different, and instead of doing small groups, they did it in a larger area so they would cover, and you might say, for instance, in one of these focus areas, instead of it being the whole area, it might just be one significant section of that area. I think that's that's the impression I get from looking and what I have just tried to skim while I was sitting here. This is the first time this, the board has received this information. So the, the notebook that we have in front of us has reports from every department. So that's why I say and before you could even consider doing anything, I think the importance is to go through this and look at this information. 
and, and study it and then bring back recommendations to the board. Well, well, that's why I asked, you know, what, what are our responsibilities with this going forward in March? But also to clarify for the folks that came here tonight and for the ones who spoke tonight is that we're going to revisit this again, <coughs> I guess, on March 18th. And, uh, and it doesn't mean we're going to go forward with anything. We're just going to identify some areas that we might be able to look at from, for a study. I mean, and I think that that's probably where we're going to go. And that's the reason why I asked what the timeline was. And Neil, you're right about the days. That's the reason I asked about that. Because if March 24th is a cutoff, we ain't got much time to, to think about it. But I think the other important thing is that there's been a year's worth of work done to get to this point with our planning staff. So there has been a lot of effort put into it by our planning staff. So that's why we need to take this information. And this is what they've given us. They haven't made any recommendations as far as what to do with each area. They've just given you the areas. Mm -hmm. So now what our job to do is to look at this information that they've spent a year putting together and, and make some notes and look. And, and they've got good summaries. If you go through and read, there's good information from... Um, each department and so I think that's what we need to do first yeah. and then from there you can base your next what happens next and Madam Mayor it looks yes, like sir. it's mostly narrative kind of information not much in the way of numbers well you get the I'm numbers mostly. once you decide you want to do that area I think they don't want to spend money on getting those numbers uh, if it's going to be costly I think that's what I'm hearing is you wait and designate the areas you truly want to look at to get the cost factors because if you try to do all six of these you'll be spending an awful lot of money and you probably won't end up doing <coughs> but staff, you won't do all the areas staff can get us some numbers I see stormwaters put some numbers in the narrative as far as what the studies may cost in some of the areas in excess a hundred thousand dollars um, but I didn't see any other numbers as far as any type of. Uh, I'll, you're asking for direction, Miss Brown, as far as the type of studies. I, you know, I'm an accountant, not a engineer, <laughs> so uh, we would need to know what what probable cost. You know, we're trying to make a formed decision, so we need to know what studies we'd have to have to make an informed decision about the projected cost of annexation. By, by section, I would think. That part I do know, being an accountant. I understand projections, I understand cash flow management, debt service, all that stuff. Uh, that's what I do, but I, I can't make any form decision, you know. It might be that none of this is even feasible, uh, even if you wanted to move forward. Um, so, like Mr. Yarbrough saying, we're kind of getting the cart before the horse here. And I would like to know why Mr. Smith hasn't had services after 25 years. I, I would like to know a little bit more about that uh, myself. If that's, uh, if that's the deal of the board, I'd like to know from staff why that, why that has occurred like that. Madam Mayor, Chancellor, are, are there, in this report, did you identify residents or areas that are receiving town services but, but are not? in Hope Mills. I'm not sure if we've uh, provided uh, that narrow of a focus. You basically have an existing conditions uh, report. I just want to make sure that we're not providing services to anybody in any of these areas that are not in the town limits. So nobody's receiving services from the town that's not in the town okay I think that's an important po uh, point of clarity just to make sure that all these six areas are pure without services okay madam mayor yes I know a lot of work went into this but I thought we were going to get a list of donut holes I mean honestly that's what I thought we were going to get not areas and and I I mean this is going to take us forever to figure out what I'm talking about. I have on Rockfish Road, we have a house that's <coughs> Hope Mills, and then we have a county house, and then we have a Hope Mills. That's a donut hole. It's surrounded by Hope Mills property, and it's sitting there, and our 
fire and police answer those calls because it's right there. That's a donut hole. Some of those areas are unpaved roads. Plank Road is an example that's sitting there in county and it's next to our fire department. I mean, it's gonna be a lot of work. I thought we were gonna get a list of those actual donut holes and the cost of what it would be to put it into the standards of DOT. I cannot look at these areas and say that that's appropriate. To me, it looks like a land grab, my opinion. Madam Mayor, yes, I, I, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example of a donut hole. Look at Kensington Village. And you guys live on Brown Street. I live in Kensington Village. I live all the way at the end. Kensington Village is actually a donut hole in our area. <laughs> now, where I live is the hole. <laughs> if you want to look at the area where I live in Kens Kensington Village, I'm the hole. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I just, a little bit of levity there, I guess. <laughs> we have a gentleman. Yes, sir. Uh, I didn't sign up. I'm president of the board of directors. I started fire department. So we work closely with the fire department. And I believe that they have the right to do that. And I'm sure they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And I know that they have the right to do that. And we're all happy, and we, we want to stay like we are. The thing that really ticks me about this whole situation is that these guys here fought for the right to vote on what we're supposed to be able to do. Hope Bill wants to take our right to vote on annexation away from us. That's going to take off everybody in this. Oh, you. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Is that, is that area named after? Uh, <laughs> is that area named after Sam Brown's family? Sam Brown is my brother. I'm Dan. Oh, okay. <laughs> my dad's name was Scott Brown. Hard Scott Brown. Gotcha. Uh -huh. And he gave the land to my brother Scott Brown Church and that, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you for the question. So um, the way PwC does that, so as, as Chancellor has said, um, if the way it is today, if a developer wanted to develop a piece of land that was outside of the town, the developer would be responsible for extending the water mains and the sewer mains to that development and putting all the water and sewer infrastructure on the site. Mm -hmm. And when that work is done, it would be done to our specifications and we would permit because we have state permitting authority, and then we would take over the ownership and maintenance of that. Okay. So as far as connection fees, we have under our normal policy, if you're just connecting to an existing PwC water main or sewer main, we have a main charge, a lateral charge, and a facility investment charge. The main charge covers the cost of the mains, the lateral charge the cost of the lateral connections to the mains, and the facility investment fee covers the cost of the, our treatment plants and the large mains that feed those plants. So in this case, where the developer extends to that property, and the main was put in by somebody else, there would be no main charge from us, okay? If the laterals were put in by a developer, there'd be no lateral charge from us. There would only be a facility investment fee that covers that cost. So that varies, um, f for example, for I know for sewer, our facility investment for a residential sewer connection is about $1,100. Our water fee, I think, is about $650 for residential. And uh, if you get into commercial, it varies by the size of the meter. But so basically, if the developer or the town would put in those infrastructure, then those customers would not have to pay that cost. They would have to pay the facility investment cost. So it's one of the three charges if, they, if the laterals and the mains were installed by somebody else. 
Okay. Does that answer your question? One, one more. Sure. The individual, like these people here, they're not a developer. How much is it going to cost them for the water to run by their property? So it, under the arrangement the way it is now, so if the people who live on Brown Road wanted to have PWC water and sewer, they would have to pay the full cost for us to extend it to them. Uh, to to his, Mr. Brown's comment, because that is not a private road, um, it's not a public road, right? Um, we're not in the business of maintaining roads. So we would not extend water and sewer down a private road unless there was a homeowners association who would accept responsibility for maintaining the road. So we do not normally install water and sewer in private roads. Mm -hmm. We will do that if there's somebody who's willing to take responsibility because if the road's not maintained, our water and sewer lines get exposed, and that's not good for anybody. Right. So that's how we normally do that. Good point. So they would, if they were doing it, so like right now, if you decided you wanted water and sewer there, you would have to pay among all the people who would be served would have to share in the total cost and that would depend on what the actual cost was and I like like Chancellor said I don't have any idea without looking at the details what that cost might be for example we when we looked at Kings Mill I think it was it's an existing subdivision that's in the town but does not have PWC water and sewer I think the cost per land was about ten thousand dollars if I remember correctly something like that so it's it's expensive I'm not saying it's not expensive so um, and the thing that the thing that most people don't understand is water is relatively easy to extend. It's a pressurized system, and you can pretty much put it any place, and the water will be delivered. I mean, you have to engineer it and all that stuff. Sewer follows topography. Sewer flows downhill. And so it's very difficult. If you're, if you're located down in a hollow, it might be very expensive because you might actually have to pump the sewage out of that area. So I think a lot of the reasons why these areas don't have water and sewer is topography. I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but there's reasons why they haven't developed and water and sewer is a contributing factor to that because it might be very expensive to do that work. Don't know without, but I think that's one of the things we see. Um, and sewer is more expensive to install than water. Yeah. yeah. So does that answer your question? Thank you, You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Brown, ma'am, yeah. ma'am, mayor, <coughs> if you run the water by my house and I don't hook to it, right. am I still going to be charged an availability fee? Um, PWC, PWC does not have the authority to make anybody to connect, okay? Um, so if, we, if PWC extend that, and I'll say, for example, right now, <laughs> We are extending a water line and a sewer line because our commission asked us to do it to support growth in the North Fayetteville Road, okay? We're installing that line, all right? And we're not requiring an availability fee from anybody along that line. Mm -hmm. There is one development who was benefiting by doing that, and they've agreed voluntarily to participate in that project, but we have no availability fee. Now, I say that the, the Big Bang Angusation area, okay, that area it's like 40, 34 different areas, 14,000 properties. The city of Fayetteville decided that when they decided to ask us to extend sewer and some water into that area, that they would assess the property owners for that. And that was a city of Fayetteville decision. So we would not normally make an avail on our own. If we were extended, we don't have any availability fee that we charge you. The communities could decide that you wanted to assess people if you wanted to do that. Fayetteville has decided they want to do the assess for partial part of that cost. Um, but if somebody says to us, we want you to extend water and sewer, then the people in that area would pay the full cost of that extension. Uh, does that answer your question? Pretty much so. I just want to know if it ran by there if I'd be charged. No, that we, we, if we were doing it, that we don't, we don't charge availability fees. Um, unless, like in the case in the Big Bang, is the city decided that they were going to assess, and that's essentially sort of an availability fee. But Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Brown, is, yes. it, is everybody in West Fayetteville that paid an assessment, have they gotten their services within a 10-year period? Um, so as I mentioned, the Big Bang annexation, okay, when, it, when the city did that and they looked at the statutes in place at the time, the PwC infrastructure that was in place met the state statutes, and that mostly what that is, we had water mains and water and sewer mains throughout that part of Fayetteville. We did not have it running down the individual subdivisions and things like that, but we had the infrastructure in place that we met the state statute requirements at the time. So the city of Fayetteville did not have a calendar running on them at that time about how fast the sewer had to be extended to the citizens. 
So that's one of the reasons why it's been, we've been able to do that over a period of time. Um, I'm not sure. The, I, think, I think we started doing sewer extensions for that area in about 2009. There are 34 areas. We just finished area 18 and 19, 10 years later. So we still have about eight to 10 years more work before everybody in West Fayetteville that was annexed will get their sewer and water when there's no water available. But they are not assessed until they get the water and sewer line. Yes. We do not have the authority to assess. So any decision like that, only the commission here would have the authority to decide whether you wanted to assess somebody for making water and sewer available. We don't have the authority to assess. So what we would have basically, if a, if a subdivision came to us and said we'd like water and sewer, we would enter in, you know, we'd, we'd, have, we'd want to know that a large percentage of the population, you know, guidelines, if, if 80, 90 percent of the people said we want this, we would enter into some kind of a participation agreement which says we'll do this and you're going to participate in this way. So we would enter into an agreement with them. It would be voluntary. But um, the, our policy is if we extend it for, at the request of somebody, that those people would pay the full cost of that extension. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Any other questions? Any other? Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much for coming this evening. You're really, welcome. we appreciate thank you me. giving thank us you. some good information. Thank you. Any other questions or any mm -hmm. other actions? Okay. I guess what we'll then do is uh, appreciate again everyone coming and any any comments that you may have uh, that you those that didn't speak tonight feel free to uh, contact the commissioners uh, the ultimate vote is, is with our commissioners as far as what takes place but the idea is the the hosting of hearings would take place before any action would be taken anyway <coughs> but this is a I'm glad that you came this evening especially uh, that we could get input and, and the PwC was here to help. And I want to thank the staff for putting this together and for working diligently to come up with um, this information and knowing that within each area we can not identify the true donut holes. But I think the thing about it was is looking at the total areas that were that are not in Hope Mills that are close to Hope Mills. Alrighty, do we have a motion? So motion moved. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you again for coming this evening and Appreciate uh, your input.